Welcome to the power up training session of all about the mouse in PowerPoint. This quick session is targeted at new PowerPoint users or people that are confused by the various mouse cursor icons and what to do with all the buttons on their mice. Along the way, I'll throw in some pro tips to get you not just up to speed, but to become an advanced commander of your mouse. Do note that almost all of these tips and tricks will work with any Microsoft Office program, including Word, Excel, Outlook, and more. Plus, this is true with all the older versions of Office. Let's get started with the most common three button mouse as seen here. We're working with a Windows centric mouse, but similar commands will also work on an Apple Mac. The left button by default is your primary button. 90% plus of all your actions will be done with this button. We will see both click, click and drag actions with the primary button in a few moments. The right button provides some magical help to navigate through all the many commands that PowerPoint possesses. I'll dive into this cool trick at the end of our training topics. The middle button in the center is often both a button and a wheel. This will be found on almost all modern mice. In the early days, there were just two button mice. The center wheel button does double duty. It can click. Some people don't realize that you just press down on the wheel. Plus, it rolls forwards and backwards to scroll through a list. Watch as I move through the slides on the far left by rolling my mouse wheel. Using the same scroll mouse key, I can also do view zooming in and out by holding down the control key and rolling the mouse wheel forward and back. See how it works? I am rolling the mouse to zoom in and now I'm rolling the opposite way to zoom out. That simple and that slick. Lastly, there are some fancy mice that do not have scroll wheels, but a center touch glide spot to do both clicking and scrolling. For laptop trackpads, you need to refer to your manual for the center button capabilities. If you are a left-hander, you can easily swap the primary mouse button from the left side to the right side by making a change in your Windows or Mac operating system. In Windows, hit your Windows key, type mouse, and select mouse settings. There is a simple click to swap the mouse button from left to right. Okay. Let's move on to the various and changing cursor indicators on your screen. I will focus on the four major categories you'll find in PowerPoint. There are more, but not seen as often. Let's start with the pointer or normal selector cursor. It is the arrow that is indicating what you're about to select when clicking. Next is the I beam or text selector that looks like a capital I. It shows up when hovering over text items and indicates which spot you will land on if you click, such as between two letters. Or if instead of clicking once, you click and drag, holding down the left mouse button as you move, you are then selecting text to work on. Next is the four-way arrow that is an indicator that if clicked and dragged, which is click and hold down the primary mouse button, it will move the object selected. See how I'm moving the text box around while the four arrow indicator is displayed? Okay, let's try selecting a different object. This time I'm gonna select a image, which is our four way arrow image. And you can see if I move my mouse pointer over it, I get the four way arrow and I can click and drag it. If I move the mouse pointer away, it goes in just a pointer selector not the four way selector. Once again, select an area and there we go. The last green cursor clue shape is a collection of four shapes. When an object is selected and you move to one of the corners, you get one of these two way arrow indicators that will preview not moving, but resizing. You can grow and shrink objects in all four directions. Note that when you click and drag, the arrow moves into a plus key, indicating that you're doing your resizing. Hover help. PowerPoint has hundreds of commands 
and it can become overwhelming for both new and longtime users if faced to find the right command. Microsoft introduced the ribbon menu in Office 2013 to help simplify the process by surfacing the most commonly used commands with icons. Power Up Training has a whole training video on the ribbon menu. See above for a link or check out the notes below for another link to this video. But even with the easier to use ribbon menu, it is sometimes hard to know what an action icon actually does. So to the rescue is the hover help. Just hover your mouse pointer over an icon and wait for a moment to have a pop-up explanation. And while new slide seems pretty obvious, see how there's a tell more feature that lets you get help specifically on that topic. And if you go to layout, it also tells you what the layout is pertaining to. But look at arrange. It has an upside down triangle that indicates there are more choices. And if you hover your mouse over that icon, it tells you what's hiding underneath. And so you can decide to go ahead and click the down arrow to see your other choices. So you're starting to see how this could be super helpful. There's another set of icons at the very top that's called the quick access toolbar. These have no words, but these are shortcuts that are hiding. And it's nice to be able to have your mouse over those to see, for example, this will start your slideshow from the beginning. So let's move away from help onto some on the screen visual clues of selection edges. When an object is selected, there are visual clues of grab handles for you to resize the object. Once selected, eight small indicator dots will show up around the edge of the selected object. You can see I have exaggerated it with my on-screen presentation, but I can still click on the edges to see it. Take a look as I select the callout box. This is a picture of text and you'll see the eight corner dots. Selection actions. So what can we do when an object is selected? We can move it and resize it based on our earlier lesson of the mouse cursor indicator. See when the object is selected, the eight little dots show up and I can then go ahead and either move or resize depending which part of the frame I'm touching on and the indicator by the screen icon. Image rotation. When an object is selected, there is a ninth indicator beyond the eight edge dots. This circular arrow can be used to rotate the selected object. Just click and spin it like the hands of a clock. Selecting multiple items. A single mouse click will select a specific object. But if you want to select multiple items, you need to use the lasso technique. Here you go outside the top edge or bottom edge and make sure you drag completely over the object. When you let go, you'll see the two objects are selected. And now we could use the rotation command that we played with earlier to rotate both of them in unison. Let's try it again. We're going to select the whole group. Once again, make sure you're outside all the groups. And now using our far away arrow, you see that we can move them as a group. Content aware right mouse menus. Now to the fantastic shortcut mouse trick that Microsoft introduced years ago to show only the relevant commands when selecting different objects. A single right mouse button, not left, will pop up a context aware menu of limited commands that apply only to the object selected. In the most recent version of PowerPoint, a double click on text provides a short menu of commands that are related to font based pieces here. Let's make a change to make it red and you can see how that works. And we can also make it larger. But if I select the object box that contains text and right click, you see I have move and copy here choices. So there are different menus. I'm now going ahead and click a select word. I'm going to right click on it. And here you'll see we go beyond just the fonts, but a variety of actions, but they're all pertinent to the selected text. Just to highlight that it is context sensitive, I'm going to select an object this time and I right click. You'll see all the menu choices here are relevant to an object, not words. Let me change the color of this object to, let's say, yellow. And bingo is done. Now, if I go to a table and I select a column, the table, when I right click on that, we'll see that there are 
menu choices that are specific to a table. And we'll see that the same thing will happen if I right click on a photo and see that they are relevant commands that are tied to the picture that is selected. This is extremely cool. Text selection tip. I have one last tip that is specific to selecting and working with text and issuing a formatting command. If a single character is selected, then the change will impact only the one character. See here, I'm going to change it to red and make it a little larger, only the character H. However, if the I-beam selector is between two letters, then the formatting applies to the whole word. Take a look, there's the flashing icon, and I'm going to go ahead and change this specific word to a different color. Let's do blue, and you'll see it applied to the word, even though the selector is just a flashing I-beam between the W and the O. An alternate way to select a single word is just double click on the word, and then you can do the same by applying different kinds of formats. Lastly, if you select the outside text box, not any of the text, but the box itself, see the indicator circles, when you apply formatting now, it applies to the inside contents of that box. Let's take a look. I'm going to change the color to purple for the whole contents of the box. And then I'm going to change the text size for everything in this box. If you take a look after I do underline, you'll see that the font names does not show up because inside that box, there are different fonts being applied. So it can't show you a single name. But if I choose a single name, it will apply it to the whole contents of that box. So there you go. You should now feel comfortable using all the buttons of your mouse and understanding how to interpret the different cursors on your screen. If you want more video training on PowerPoint like this, do subscribe to our channel. And if this was useful, give me a thumbs up. Likes encourages me to make more free training videos for you. And if you want more information, visit our YouTube channel or visit our website at power-up.training. Until then, power up.